How's it going everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the middle of December, heading into the new year here of 2020, turning over this new decade. And as you all read in the title, we're going to be discussing you guys and and the reverse split that we're going to be seeing here in a couple of days in terms of you guys and how this will affect shareholders if you're currently holding you guys through this reverse split. We'll talk about that in this video. So all I ask from you is to simply go down below and hit that like button if you find value in this video, which I'm sure you'll find some value in this video. And consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me. And consider joining our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Facebook group 100% free and those are linked down below in the description box. So let's get started here with the SMP and I figured to start recording this video a bit earlier than normal. Usually I film these after the market closes but today guys honestly the market's been quite boring in terms of the SMP, the Dow and the NASDAQ. Again we'll jump into some individual stocks that I um, see value in now and that did quite well today but but the overall markets, you know, they were quite boring. If we go to the one day, one minute, you can see we were just consolidating all day today on the S&P. We're literally up $2 right now, up 0.07%. So we're pretty much just holding yesterday's support at around 3190 right 3195 that general area seems to be a very strong support right now and it makes sense that we didn't see another crazy green day today guys because if you recall yesterday we had a massive gap up in the markets we closed at 3168 the prior week on Friday and into Monday we were up close to 1% 0.85 0 0.9% to be exact on the S&P so it seems like we're just cooling off a bit holding this support and honestly this looks bullish in my personal opinion you know we can see similar a uh, similar pattern happened a couple of days ago we kind of consolidated for a couple of days then we leveled up now we're consolidating we're about to meet that 50 SMA on this five day five minute which could hold as a support before maybe we level up again push to 3200 um, and higher, maybe to another all-time high. And of course, if we break this 180 SMA, you know, if we go back to that 20-day or to that 20-day chart um, in the first place, that could be a, 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 a sign that we may be selling off even further down here, which would be a healthy correction, maybe down to around 3170 in the short term, um, putting us right on top of that 50 SMA on this 20-day, one-hour chart. So overall, consolidation day here for for the S&P up $2 right now and honestly in these next 42 minutes that the market is opened I doubt something crazy will happen that will fluctuate it too much so at this point we're probably going to close pretty flat for the S&P 500 the Dow Jones here guys is up a bit more up 0.21% up 60 points and oh I didn't mention the S&P hit an all time high today believe it or not at 3198 so almost 32 200 despite the flat day and going back to that Dow um, we actually did not hit an all-time high we did yesterday at 28,300 and uh, yeah again we've really just been flat on the day uh, up a bit more than the S&P up about 0.21 percent uh, but still nothing too crazy and it makes sense because yesterday we saw a massive push in these markets the Dow was up what let's see it was close to 1 percent 0.75 percent at its high from the close on Friday so the fact that you know we're cooling off a bit it makes sense and even though we're cooling off we're seeing a bit of consolidation the uptrend is still holding even on the Dow on the five day five minute you can see this pull down we saw in yesterday's session which I talked about in yesterday's session ended up deeming as a or proving to be a higher low right we 
held a higher low from the previous, again, on top of that 180 SMA, and it seems like we want to close on top of that 180 SMA on the 5-day, five 5-minute, five which, in my opinion, is very, very bullish here for the Dow Jones. So overall, this is looking um, good, in my opinion. The NASDAQ is very similar to the S&P. It's very flat here. $4 in the green, up 0.05% here, and if we zoom in a bit to that 5-day, five 5-minute five chart, you can see we hit that all-time high. Was that yesterday? Um, actually, no, that was today. It was actually, these are the futures that we're looking at. So the futures hit an all-time high um, 3 a.m. So this is before the market even opened um, Eastern Standard Time here. So 86.26 is that all-time high. But again, just like the S&P, the Dow, we've been consolidating over the past, I'd say, um, you know, 24, 48 hours at this point in these markets ever since that surge we saw over the weekend. So that's kind of it for the NASDAQ. There's really nothing crazy um, going on here. One thing that I might point out that I might uh, consider, um, you know, keeping in mind is a pull down because this NASDAQ, guys, is very overextended in my opinion, overbought on the RSI. If we saw a pull down to maybe 8,500, maybe down to around 8,450, you know, that would not surprise me. I think that would be a healthy retracement, but who knows? with how you know how hot these markets have been I don't even know if we'll get that pullback but we'll have to wait and see you know the S&P is getting a bit overbought as well you know all these markets it seems like are overbought at this point maybe not as much or you know the Dow's not as much overbought in terms of the RSI as the S&P and the Nasdaq but it would make sense here if we're looking like a month or two out that we may see a little correction three four five percent hey just putting it out there you know all time highs are great and all but reality is going to set in soon where we might see a pull down similar to this right we saw a nice pull down here we saw a nice pull down here we saw a pretty big pull down here towards you know the end of October in the middle uh, or in the beginning of September we saw another pull down here so ultimately we're going to get to that point where you know this euphoria all time high it's going to you know end up selling off a bit it's coming to that point. I'm not saying it's going to be tomorrow, this week, next week, a month from now. I don't know. We don't know. Nobody knows, but it's going to come to a point where we're going to sell off a bit, and that's why it's important to have cash on hand, and I've been mentioning in these videos how I'm pretty cash heavy right now. Although I am in some swings, I'm still more cash heavy than normal, and this is the reason why, guys, because we're at all-time highs, and I like getting in on dips. So that's kind of my thoughts on the market here, some strategies, and uh, just my thoughts in general, technical breakdowns, and what ended up happening today. So let me know down below in those comments, what are your thoughts on the market? Do not be shy. Please let me know. I love talking to you guys down below in those comments. And let's talk about what I ended up doing today in terms of my trading. So the first trade I ended up taking today, well, really the only trade I ended up initiating today was Home Depot, ticker symbol HD. And this is one that a lot of my subscribers have been asking me about. We've been talking about it a lot in the Discord chat, and I've been mentioning it in these videos videos that it could serve an opportunity here if it were to break above that 50 SMA and really confirm the continuation of the uptrend that we are seeing on all of these long-term charts, right? We can see long-term chart number one, which is the year-day chart. We can see the uptrend. This is simply a pull down based on these technicals, and we needed that pop on the 20-day, one-hour chart, in my opinion, for it to be a buy signal. So the fact that we got that again on the 20 day chart that confirms a lot of uh, points here on the larger term time frames as well which is why it's super important to uh, you know look at all different time frames in my opinion on the three year one week chart we can see uptrend is continuing bullish candle is forming that is good so back to that hourly chart we're getting that break like I mentioned and on that four hour chart we can see the 50 SMA break as well so overall today I just initially initiated a position on that break this morning. No joke. I started buying in at around, I believe, 217.50, bought a little bit more at around 218. So this is the only really trade, um, you know, I guess two trades because I bought two, uh, you know, separate positions here um, that, I'm, that I'm involved with today, right? And I'm looking to hold this one 
if we go back to that four hour chart, the goal sell target is going to be around, um, well, the first goal sell target is going to be around 223 bucks to around, uh, I'd say 225. Ideally, 223 is where I'm looking to offload a lot of the shares. And from where I am, I am in right now, that's around a three to about a 3.5% potential for profit. Nothing crazy, not 10, 20, 30, 50% like these penny stocks, but as a quote unquote safer swing, as I would consider HD, that's good in my opinion. Three, four, five percent. And who knows if it breaks 223, guys, there's a lot more potential. Again, on those longer term charts, we can see that, you know, overall, each time it's pulled down, it's hit an all time high. It's recovered. Even on the three year chart, we can see that as well. So, if it goes to three or 240, that could be even more potential for Home Depot. So that is one that I started buying in today. Maybe we'll add more tomorrow, depending on what the price action there looks like. Two other ones that I'm involved with today or that I've been involved with are um, at V ticker symbol ATVI. Like I mentioned in yesterday's video and uh, the previous couple of videos, I've been in at V since around, what was it, like 57, um, you know, Roughly 5730, I believe my cost basis is. And I didn't end up um, selling completely out of the position up here like a lot of people probably would have. But I believe that this has a lot more potential to the upside, um, which is why I'm still holding on to my shares. And I mentioned in yesterday's video how, you know, very overbought, not looking to buy more up here, but we may see a pull down where I might add more. So I didn't add more quite yet um, because I could see, we could see rather um, a further pull down here, maybe down even further closer to my, to my cost basis. Um, and I'm waiting to see if that happens, right? So I'm in around 57 bucks, ideally the goal on this position is to sell at around 60, 61, 62 is where I'm looking to get completely out. But at 60 bucks is where I'd like to start selling out um, of the at the position. And PayPal is another one that I'm in right now, um, ticker symbol PYPL. If you guys recall, I got in this one at around 104.30, ended up selling off um, a little bit of my position on Friday, um, ran up yesterday very quick to about 110. Today, we saw a lot of profit takers this morning, which makes sense because, again, the stocks ran up so much in the past literally three days of trading. But the thing is that that, that led me to continue to hold this into tomorrow's session is we're holding this 108 level at a higher low as a support, which is very critical because if we go back to that four-hour chart, we can see that level was a resistance. Now we're holding it as a new support, which gives us potential or rather more uh, potential upside here up to around 112, which gives this position another three, four percent upside um, from where it is right now. So PayPal, Activision, Blizzard, and uh, what's the other one? Home Depot, HD. Those are the three that I'm currently involved with right now. All right, guys. So let's talk about you guys. I know most of you clicked on in this video, a lot of you at least, because you want to see what's going to happen to your UGAS position. And let's be honest here, guys. You're not supposed to hold UGAS long term. You're not supposed to swing trade it. But unfortunately, I know there's a lot of bag holders watching this, which means you've been holding the uh, ETN for a while. You're down on the ETN and you want it to recover to, you know, recoup your money. So this is going to affect you. If you're one of those people that are stuck in UGAS, if you're holding UGAS right now, this reverse split, it's going to affect you and it's going to change up how many shares that you have in your account. And it's also going to give you what's known as partials, which we'll go over here in a minute. So let's get into that right now. So Credit Suisse AG announced today that it will implement a 1 for 10 reverse split of its Velocity Shares 3x long natural gas ETNs, also known as UGAS, ticker symbol UGAZ, expected to be effective as of December 23rd, 2019. So right now, the day I'm recording this video, it's the 17th of December. So in six days from now, this is going to go into to effect, which is next Monday, beginning next week. The reverse split will be effective at the opening of trading on December 23rd, 2019. You guys will begin trading on the New York Stock Exchange ARCA on a reverse split adjusted basis on December 23rd, 
2019. Holders of UGAS who purchased such ETNs prior to December 23rd, 2019 will receive one reverse split adjusted ETN for every 10 pre-reverse split ETN. So all that means, guys, is let's say you have 10 shares of UGAS right now. Let's say you have 20 shares of UGAS right now. You're going to get one new adjusted, you know, reverse split ETF share for those 10 shares that you have. And obviously, if you have, you know, 20 shares, 30 shares, 40 shares, 50 shares, 60 shares, the more, you know, shares you have, obviously, the more in terms of, you know, the uh, adjusted split amount that you're going to get, right? That that makes sense there. So it really comes down to this. If you have a thousand shares, you're going to get cut down to a hundred shares. If you you have a hundred shares are going to get cut down to 10 shares of ownership and if you have obviously 10 shares of you guys right now you're going to end up having one share but let's say you have um you know a number that's not divisible by 10 so let's say you have 12 shares you know 22 shares 35 shares. Let's go over what that is going to look like for you and some other things that you need to know about this. So purchasers that hold a number of ETNs not evenly divisible by 10 will receive a cash payment for any fractional ETNs remaining, quote unquote, the partials, like I mentioned a minute or two ago. And the cash amount that's due on any of these partials will be determined on December 30th, 2019, based on the closing indicative value of UGAS on that date and will be paid out by Credit Suisse AG on or about January 3rd, 2020. So if you're currently holding UGAS right now, guys, watch out for what this is going to close at on December 30th. This is very, very important because what that closes at, that's kind of what's going to determine how much money you're going to receive in your partials and kind of what the split basis is going to look like based on however many shares you own of the ETN. The closing indicative value of UGAS on December 20th, 2019 will be multiplied by 10 to determine the reverse split adjusted closing indicative value. Following the reverse split, UGAS will have a new CUSIP, which you guys don't have to worry about. That's really just an identification number for, uh, you know, financial instruments, but will retain its current ticker symbol. The reverse split will affect the trading denomination of UGAS, like we mentioned, but it will not have any effect on the stated principal amount of the ETNs, except that the stated principal amount will be reduced by the corresponding aggregate amount of any cash payments for partials. So really, guys, at this point, you know, one thing that's going to happen, especially if you own UGAS and you're bag holding UGAS, is, is that you're going to have to, uh, you know, kind of take a loss or, you know, eat a loss in terms of those partials that you're going to be paid out, uh, you know, on the 3rd of January based on, you know, what I just said, right? So you're kind of forced to take a loss on those and kind of the mentality behind people that are bag holding is that it's eventually going to get back to cost basis so you'll sell out and really recoup your loss. So now that you have to get these partials, there's really no chance for those shares that are not divisible by 10 to get back to that value that you bought them at. So again, you have to eat that loss and pretty much just take a loss right off the bat. But if you're holding any shares, um, again, divisible by 10, those will still have you know the chance to get back to wherever you bought them if you are in the situation um, of bag holding them. So we've been through this before with DGAS. They went through a reverse split um, last year. I believe UGAS did last year as well, uh, if, I, if I'm not uh, mistaken there, if I'm remembering correctly. And this happens a lot, guys. You know, reverse splits, you get the partials, and then ultimately people forget about it. And that's the thing with these leveraged ETNs. They have decay, guys. They decay 
over time, which is why you can see this thing's been downtrending, and which is why they do these reverse splits. Think about it. If they didn't do reverse splits, this thing would continue to go down and down and down and down until it's literally worthless, I, I feel like, right? That's kind of how, you know, the, that's kind of why they do reverse splits to keep that from happening, to keep it from going to such a low value. So that's kind of the overview on you guys, you know, the reverse split. It, what's kind of going to happen to you if you own shares right now of you guys? And if we're breaking down you guys on a technical basis at this point, you know, to see, you know, what could happen in these next couple of days, let's take a look at NGF 21st, you know, the natural gas January futures contracts. Overall, here on the 20, or rather the 90 day, two hour chart, we're seeing a resistance under that 180 SMA, which is not good for the bulls, right? But if we pull up that hourly chart, we still have that breakout above that 180 SMA, which is good, right? That's a pretty good sign for the bulls. And the fact that we are holding a higher low right now at 230, that's also a good sign despite this pull down that we've seen over the past couple of days. So overall, this trend is looking pretty promising for maybe a rally um, to 240 in the short term if we continue, you know, a higher high, higher low uptrend pattern here that's very possible and if that does happen you know you guys could still see some short-term upside here despite the reverse split news um, despite everything going on right now um, with it so that's kind of something that I'm looking at as a, uh, a potential situation here but on the flip side with natural gas being bearish in general the uh, reports the natural gas inventory reports pointing to that D gas could be a great move if we get that bearish report um, this Thursday, which is in two days at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's pretty much it for DGAS, you guys, guys, the rundown right now with the reverse split. Let me know down below what your thoughts are on that. I'd love to know. Now let's wrap up the video with a couple of stocks that I'm watching right now. So the first stock I'm watching is McDonald's, ticker symbol MCD, and this is one I'm watching due to the massive resistance that it's currently at at being at around 198 bucks and it seems like actually now that I'm recording uh, this video we can see that it just got rejected very very strongly by that resistance today as you guys can see by the downtrend here that it's been on all day on the daily chart um, so that's kind of a, a bad sign in the short term but you know overall it seems like on the hourly chart we're still uptrending holding that 50 SMA which gives me hope that we could eventually get over that 198 level of resistance over these next couple of days. And that's exactly what I'm waiting for here um, with McDonald's because if that break occurs, we can see it has a ton of potential for profit. You know, 200 bucks could be the next level we get to, which honestly is not too big of a profit there. But above that, you know, 205 is one of the, the next major levels, which that's where the major profits start to kick in, right? From 198 up to there. That's about 3-4%. So that's what I'm watching with McDonald's, ticker symbol MCD. Chipotle Mexican Grill is another one of those restaurant stocks that's on the verge of a break out here if it gets above 835 bucks and this is a level that we've been seeing a bit of resistance at um, you know over the past couple of months here you know in in, in September and October and even you know back in the last couple of days we saw a bit of resistance at around 830 so if we break this level 830 835 I can see this going up to about 860 which does give it around a 2.5 to a three percent profit potential and Netflix is another one of those stocks, guys. I feel like I have one of these stocks every single day that I talk about, and I'm like, ah, crap, I missed it. This is another one of those. I called this one out yesterday on this higher low bounce on top of that 180 SMA on this four hour chart. And you guys can see, boom, today, $12 in the green, up 4%. Um, I do believe this was due to a catalyst, though. I was reading into it. Um, I couldn't seem to pinpoint it onto one catalyst, uh, but I do have something here here, you know, Netflix recorded a $63.9 million jump, or not million dollar jump, million subscriber jump in global subscriptions from March 2017 <clears throat> to, uh, excuse me guys, September 2019. So that could be a positive catalyst. That came 
come out this morning. Um, we got some news around that. That could be why Netflix pushed. I could be completely wrong on that. But either way, it made a pretty strong move here where now it seems like we're facing 320, which could be the next leg up for Netflix um, up to around 340. So this one's on watch from 320 to 340. That's around a 6% potential for profit here on ticker symbol NFLX. Other ones I'm watching obviously are the ones that I'm currently in. You know, we have PayPal from 108 to 111. We talked about that already. You know, Home Depot is one that I'm watching. I'm already in. Tesla is another one that I'm watching, which if I were to get in at this point, guys, I'd be, you know, suffering a bit of FOMO, right? I don't know if I want to get in here, but I'm looking at it still in general to see what it does at this point. Does it see a retracement down to 360? That would be quite a pull down. If it does, that's where I might enter Tesla. Or does it break above 385, 390, right? Make a leg up to 400. That could really happen. So it's on my watch list. I'm looking to see what it ends up doing. I think it's a really good idea to always keep an eye on hot stocks like this and let's talk about hot because neo has been hot guys today neo's up another 12 cents up five percent here getting close to that 270 target that we set out a couple of um days ago right we talked about how this pull down looked pretty attractive 240 if it were to break that it could go to 260 270 and that's exactly what's happening and although i didn't trade it in my swing or day account i'm actually long on neo and in general in my in my long-term accounts so yeah either way I benefited from this push although I did not trade it in my swing or day trade accounts so Shopify is the last one I want to talk about here which saw that healthy retracement today um, you know down to about 380 and the fact that we held this level you know down here at about 380 we held it now we're closing on a little rally this is a good sign in my opinion for for a continuation here on Shopify, at least back up to 396 or maybe even 400 bucks, right? So at, in the short term, I do see a $10 per uh, per share potential for profit here on Shopify, which in all leads it to be around, I'd say around like a two to three percent, maybe a one, yeah, like three percent potential for profit there on Shopify, and uh, really that's it. For this video, guys, a bit of a longer one today. If you enjoyed it, let me know down below in the comments. Uh, you know what your thoughts are, stocks you're watching, your thoughts on the markets in general, the you guys reverse split, all that good stuff. I'd love to know your thoughts. And if you enjoyed the video, go down below, hit that like button for me. Consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me. And if you want two free stocks from Webull, go down below, use my link, deposit 100 bucks, and you'll get two free stocks, one valued up to 500 bucks. The the other one valued up to 1400 bucks. So that link's down below. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. As always, peace out.